Peggy Carter. During the war, I fought side by side with Captain America. We defeated the enemy. Please, don't do this. We have time. But I lost the love of my life. I work for the SSR, America's premier covert intelligence agency. But now that the war is over, my mission parameters these days are... Agent Carter, cover the phones. Different. That all changed when an old friend asked me to become a double agent. I have a vault. Somebody cleaned me out. A couple of weeks later, my inventions, they start turning up on the black market. As of this moment, Howard Stark is a fugitive from justice. You're the only one that can clear my name. He left me with an ally. Edwin Jarvis. He'll help you in any way he can. I found the man who stole Howard's inventions. He was part of a bigger conspiracy. Leviathan is coming. Leviathan. He didn't have time to tell me. All he left behind was a symbol. I must determine what this means before the SSR catches up to me. All my friends. You don't know the rules of the house. Is this not apartment 3F? Who are you? Jimmy. My girlfriend Molly. She lives here, I swear. 5'5? Five five, blonde? Works at Bonwit Teller? Next one over. Would it be too much trouble if I could come there? Have a nice night. His room key is the only evidence we found at the crime scene. What can you tell us about it? It was relatively clean. He came and went without so much as a peep. Any visitors? Only for just an hour. Oh. Looks like business is good. Hey, Ray. How you doing? This is it, 424. Check all the usual hidey holes. Hey, take it easy on the furniture. That'll be all. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Welcome to Amateur Hour. Got cash, passports. Got a British passport for Alfred Lean, an American passport for an Orson Hawks, and an Italian passport for Federico Rosslini. We got a film buff on our hands. What you got? You find something? Well, it sure isn't nothing. Again. What am I paying for? Still better than the blitz, right, English? No, just barely. Morning, girls. Someone had a late night. What time the cat drag you in? I didn't exactly get dragged out. Molly, you didn't. What can I say? Jimmy is very persuasive. And nimble. You got a guy, Peggy? I'm afraid I'm married to my work at the moment. What about Mr. Fancy? Who's that? You know, the guy I've seen around the auto mat. Nice suit, nice car, nice shoulders. Oh, no. No, <clears throat> he's just a colleague. Good day, ladies. Early bird and all that. Now, Miss Carter, please sit. This will only be a moment. 
1925, the great Harry Houdini performed at this very building. No, oh, Houdini, I've never got. Women stood spellbound and watched as he escaped from handcuffs and street jackets and steamer trunks. But the one trick he could not pull off was ascending the stairs. It's a simple rule, ladies. No men above the first floor. Molly Bowen, please go to your room and pack your things. Miss Fry, please. I hope you had a splendid evening because it will be your last at the Griffith. Let her be an example for the rest of you. This institution is not unlike Fort Knox or Alcatraz. Whether by force or trickery, this building is impenetrable. Do you believe that? I don't, actually. No building is impenetrable. Ladies and gentlemen, our pal, Leap Baranis. Corner says the amalgam in his teeth is Russian. Yeah? How'd he get the scar? His voice box was cut out. Mm. Probably happened during the war. This guy served Russian Rifle Division, 478th. Now, you ready to have your socks knocked off? Leap Baranis died. I know that, son. I'm staring at his corpse. Two years ago, a guy I knew in basic ended up in U.S. Embassy in Moscow. I had him dig into the 478th. Turns out they were wiped out in 44 in the Battle of Finnau, Germany. Dead don't walk. At least not in my experience. Where are we at with your guy? We're still pulling what's left of him from the truck wreckage. We were able to lift some prints from the passports that I found. We had a vodka bottle, plus we got this beauty. Don't touch. What'd the lab rats say? They think it's some kind of long-range transmitter. How long? Moscow long? Where's this picture by your embassy friend? I'm on it. Hey, passport guy's mine. You got any friends in Moscow? Or anywhere else? Don't be that guy. Ran the license plate we pulled from the rocks on debris. Belongs to Howard Stark. I found that. Where's the rest of the car? It just got a plate and a bumper. Boss, Stark was on the lamb when Roxxon went down. Do we really think he'd risk his freedom to blow it up? Or in, or whatever the hell happened? Somebody was driving that car. I want to know who. Darling, I'm going to take you off on that offer. The day beckons. I'll uh, be in the garden. Love you. And you. In polite society, one telephones ahead before trespassing. I imagine a strange woman traipsing through the property isn't a completely unusual occurrence. It's a fair point. What brings you here? My landlady gave me an idea. Oh, splendid. Well, now, if we can get an opinion from your butcher, Someone robbed Howard's impenetrable vault. If I can find out how he got in, perhaps I can trace where he went and locate Howard's missing technology. You're not really dressed for it, I'm afraid. Our thief didn't exactly walk the items out of the front door. The night of the break-in, did you hear anything? Well, no, there was a tremendous thunderstorm. It knocked the power out, including the alarms, for almost two hours. Not that I would have heard any of it. I'm afraid the sultry combination of candlelight and rain always puts me out like a baby. <laughs> You're quite the guard dog. Security is not within my purview. SSR, open up. Unbelievable. A known fugitive isn't answering his door. Knock harder. Sure, can I borrow your forehead? Good afternoon, gentlemen. How may I help you? Good afternoon. Agents Thompson and Sousa with the SSR. If you're looking for Mr. Stark, I'm afraid he's indefinitely unavailable. We're well aware of that, Mr. Jarvis. 
That is your name, isn't it? Mr. Edwin Jarvis. You misplaced anything recently? Yes, I did lose a fountain pen on Fifth Avenue. How about the bumper off a of fleet master or anything like that? Just the bumper? We should found the entire car. I reported it stolen several days ago. Detective Davis of the 19th Precinct was very helpful. There's nothing further. And that bumper was found in a major crime scene. There's plenty further. Mr. Stark doesn't like visitors, whether he's here to receive them or not. Look, Mr. Jarvis, I can call a judge and wait here to get a warrant. But honestly, it's almost lunchtime and I'm hungry. I'd just like to take a ride downtown. I'll lead the way. Well, this will be novel. I haven't been in the back of the car in years. Be a pal? Sorry, Kuzminski. I got plans. Yawk, what about you? I told my galley take her to a show. I'll cover my shift tonight. I can't swing it. Why don't you ask Carter? Right. Dooley would kill me if I let a lady take nights. Besides, she can barely make her own shift. Workday starts at 9 a.m., honey. Tell me, Agent Kuzminski, who are you bringing to the show? Your wife or your girlfriend? <laughs> Come on in. Have a seat. We really appreciate you coming down here to talk with us, Mr. Jarvis. Well, naturally. But I don't think I can tell you anything that isn't already in the missing car report I found. That report might take us a while to dig up. You see, the NYPD aren't as efficient as the SSR at record keeping, which is saying something. Because our files are a wreck. What yeah, it's... Was it exactly? My filing's impeccable. Isn't that Stark's butler? You know this guy? Only from the file. Do you think he was really involved in the Roxham implosion? Well, maybe he didn't blow the place up. He's capable of driving a getaway car. <laughs> it's funny. A lot of stuff gets stolen from Howard Stark. Cars, bombs, death rays. Actually, the death rays accounted for. It's in Nevada, I believe. Hmm. You know these men? Take a good look. We have reliable information that says that both of these men were in possession of some of your bosses, uh, missing doohickeys. And now they're dead. Oh, what a pity. Sounds like you found our thieves. Unless, of course, they were working for your boss. Did you look at that? Five minutes in, Thompson hasn't knocked out a single tooth. Don't let this guy fool you. He may be a butler. Well, there's no powerful people if we don't play this just right. We'll have a dozen lawyers down here by lunch. What about the stolen car report? Currently lost in the system. But if the car was actually stolen, we got nothing to use on it. Yeah. We got something that'll rattle this Lammy's cage good. I'll tell you, you know what I would do? The bumper fell off my car while I was committing a crime. I filed a stolen car report. But if you're implying that Mr. Stark would ever... I'm implying you. Mr. Stark's on the run. He is also an innocent man. I can see why he hired you. You're smart, cool-headed, extremely loyal. Which is surprising, considering you were charged with treason. There you go. Stay on him. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Not much in there. It seems as whatever you did has been swept under a rug. I'm guessing it's a big green one made of Stark money. Hmm? So, you dodged the treason conviction. But you couldn't get out of the dishonorable discharge. Well, I guess money can't buy everything. This looks bad. Bad to every good man who ever served. Bad to your friends, your neighbors. And to the fine folks at the Office of Immigration. Yeah, I'm putting that on the table. That'll be a fun conversation to have with the wife. Yeah? Honey, pack a bag. What a bother. We're being deported. 
out. Let's get her on the phone. I'll tell her myself. You leave my wife out of this. You dragged her into it when you broke the law with your boss. You pay, she pays. He's about to fold. And to admit what? If I have my way, damn near everything. This guy washes Stark's underwear. He knows. Hey, it's just getting good. I should get back to my station. I'm sure the last thing you'd want is to put on on a plane and have to explain why. All right, I'll let you take my shift. It's a one-time offer, Carter. Carter! Excuse me, Chief Tooley, I need your signature, sir. What? Can it wait? I'm afraid the codes are ready for analysis. I need your approval. <clears throat> Thank you. Why don't you sit here a while? Think about it. I'm gonna get a coffee. You want some? That's my cue. Really nice, Jack. Mm hmm You feel him sweat? Mm -hmm. Why is the key stay on the way? Mr. Jarvis, I want you to meet... Chief Dooley, I'm afraid I mistakenly took your stolen car report. Well, thank you for your hospitality, gentlemen. Unless you're going to arrest and charge me, I'll be on my way. If there's anything further you'd like to discuss, please. Feel free to contact one of Mr. Stark's attorneys. Do you have any idea how stupid that was? I didn't. Exactly. You didn't think. For the love of people, somebody tell me what I did, who I cheesed off to have you dumped in my lap. And you wonder why you're never catching the actual assignments. There you go. You see this man? He did exemplary work today, and you ruined it. Now, what do you have to say to him? Agent Thompson, I apologize. Agent Carter, sorry, doesn't even begin to cover it. Doesn't even begin to cover it. Get out of my sight. Sir. I've spreaded roots. Well, hello, Angie. Sorry. I was... I... An eight-hour shift, and I got a whole 50 cents in tips. The war's over. I thought we were all spending money again. How was your day? Well, 50 cents in tips would have been a considerable improvement. I got a bottle of schnapps and half a rhubarb pie. Let's see which one makes us sick first. Oh, sounds lovely, but I was just about to go to bed. It's 8 o'clock, Grandma. Come on, tell me about your crappy day. Maybe it'll make me feel better. I'm really tired. M maybe some other time. Didn't mean to disturb you. No, you did disturb me. No, I just fine. I know a brush off when I see it. Uh, you. Oh. Oh, Miss Carter, Miss Martinelli. May I introduce you to our new resident, Miss Dorothy Underwood? Oh, call me Dottie. Nice to meet you. This place is pretty swell, huh? Mm. Seems like one big happy family. Well, where's off? Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. I love your accent. England, right? I've never met anybody from there. Miss Underwood hails from Iowa and is pursuing a ballet career. Typically, I find dancers too carefree and irresponsible, <laughs> though I have always appreciated the discipline of ballet. Nice to meet you, Doc. Uh, 
I didn't mean to interrupt. No harm. Wasn't much more to say. I'm sure you'll be very happy here. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to tell me? Not at present, no. Very well. Let's get on with it. Mr. Stark believed the intruder had some advanced technological assistance. Mr. Stark believes brushing your teeth requires advanced technological assistance. Shall we? We've done this before. In the layers before the war. At the time, I was strapped to a very amusing Spaniard. <laughs> you are, of course, well within your rights to maintain your privacy. Thank you. I agree. Charge of treason, out of context, not necessarily what it appears to be. Quite so. In fact, my involvement with you and Mr. Stark could, on the face of it, be considered treasonous. Indeed it could. I don't need to know the details of your past, Mr. Jarvis. I appreciate that. Thank you. Our investigators found an open manhole covered five blocks away. They assumed the thief came up there. Carrying hundreds of pounds of equipment seems unlikely. You said it rained the night of the break-in. It was a positive deluge. Why? New York is one of the last cities to still use its sewers to run off stormwater. When the tunnels are full, the tide gate opens and the water runs in through the river. All Mr. Brannis would have needed is a raft and a forecast. He could have floated his stolen treasure all the way to the sea. I'm heading out. Make sure the chief gets this when he gets back. You got a hit on my passports? Prince Charming's name is Sasha Demidoff. You might know the rest of the story. Let me guess. He was dead before he died. Battle of wherever. Fennel. Congrats, Susa. You are the brains of the night shift. You ladies have a good night. You know, the passports were a gift from me. The least you could do is cover my shift, you rat bastard. I thought you were going to ask Carter. I was. I did. She acted like I was waving a socket from her face. I'm sure you were polite and respectful as always. You sweet on her, Susan. <laughs> Don't you have enough women in your life to worry about? Huh. Let me give you a nickel's worth of free advice, pal. Give it up. No girl's gonna trade in a red, white, and blue shield for an aluminum crutch. Your knowledge of waste removal rather surprises me. I spent a week down here in the winter of 42. It was another time, perhaps. After all, we all have secrets. I was wrong. I need to know. Miss Carter. If we're going to be working together, risking our lives together, then I must be able to trust you. On well, my honor, you can. Your honor is not enough. Mr. Stark deemed me worthy of his trust. I would hope that would suffice. Mr. Stark would trust a shark to not bite him if it was wearing a short enough skirt. That's not entirely relevant. Would it satisfy you to know that the charge of treason was dropped almost immediately? It's a start. Before the war, I served under a general. We traveled a great deal. We were in Budapest when I met Anna. She worked in a hotel tailor's shop, sold me the most beautiful tie. <laughs> and then the war broke out and things became difficult. She was Jewish. Still is, I'm happy to say. The general carried several letters of transit in his safe, any one of which would have ensured her safety. But he refused to sign. You forged his name. Hence the dishonorable discharge. It was filing the papers that sunk me. I was arrested in the middle of Whitehall. Hmm. On a Tuesday. How did Anna get out? The same way I avoided the noose. Howard. Mr. Stark had unfinished business with the general, and he and I had always got along. When he heard of my predicament, he used his influence. Sounds like a story. Another time, perhaps. 
Anna obviously knows what Howard did for you, but she doesn't know what you do for him. Not recently, no. I may not always be truthful with Anna, but I am always honest. Difficult balance, that. One that I imagine you know all too well. Here we are. Mr. Brannis couldn't have gone very far with a whole raft full of volatile technology. Not far at all. Mr. Brannis' symbol. to have seen better days. Still connected to the electric. Someone's using it. Do you have another one of those? Someone's getting very confident. Skittish. Very well aware of that. Okay. I remember you. Nasty little bugger. What does he do? The constrictor. Causes involuntary catastrophic muscle contraction. Bones break, I'm afraid. It was originally designed for back massage. Mm. That's right. Let's call it in. Miss Carter, I'm not sure you've thought this through. You can't reveal that you found these items. I can't bloody well leave them here for someone else to find. I'm not suggesting... I'm certainly not turning them over to you to be stolen the next time you feel sleepy. Agent Carter, how did you come to discover the stolen items? Leet Brannis uh, told me where they were. And how did you come into contact with Mr. Brannis? I have been conducting my own private investigation with Howard Stark. What is your relationship with Howard Stark? Have you been in contact with him since his disappearance? Are you collaborating with Stark, a known traitor and fugitive from justice? Publicly revealing these items won't clear Mr. Stark's name. They'll only place you under suspicion along with him. Do you see the day I've had? I will call them in, and they will respect me. But they won't. They'll only use it to tear you down. If you wish to clear Mr. Stark's name, you must do so from the shadows. There's a phone box across the street. Call it in. But for God's sake, don't let Krasminski get hold of it. Susa's working in the office tonight. I can just about stomach him getting the credit. Oh, and uh, Mr. Jarvis, they know your voice now. Susan. Hey, Mac. I uh, got a hot tip for you. What? Yeah, Howard Stark stole an inventions there. They're, they're on a boat near the Southside Pier. The Heartbreak, Doc 12. Who is this? Just a pal. Tell me your name. How did you get this number? 
Have a lovely night. Right. Very good. Who's that? Anonymous tip. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. That didn't take long. Oh. I thought you were someone else. One of me. Yeah, I'm not afraid to kill a woman. Would it make a difference if I told you I won't make it easy? Yeah. He told me that too. I imagine that'll be your colleagues. We must go. You can't leave me here. He's a witness. There's no time. Not yanking your chain. There it is. SSR, don't move. Don't think you can. <laughs> this is it. Look at the Stark stuff. Looks like the whole hall. Ease up on that, will you? I don't want to end up inside out. We're getting promotions out of this. Why? Because we answered the phone? This guy handed to us. Again. Somebody's wrapping this up like it's Christmas. Christmas? Well, hey, who doesn't love Christmas? I'm going to call Chief. <laughs> Checked and signed in. <laughs> Careful with that, boys. Hey, keep it sealed off! You got it! Who's our new helpful friend? Jerome Zandow. He had an act on a sideshow at Coney Island. Petty crimes here and there. Probably just muscle for hire. Even muscle knows something. He had his hands on an arsenal of Stark technology when he just sat there with it. What's he waiting for? I'll get it out of him. Crates are loaded up. I want to lead in a chase car. Don't do the scenic route. Let's get it behind SSR walls ASAP. I'll wake up the egghead, start figuring out what the hell this stuff is. Hey, boys, drive carefully. I don't want to be the one who sunk Manhattan. I don't remember you, buddy. My pal Jack has got a special gift for interrogations. He's real convincing. Gets guys to spill their guts. That's not an expression. We've got to use a mop. I need a dock. My oh, arm's broke. What's the point of fixing up if we're just going to break you again? Is that dame working for you? What dame? The one on the boat. English broad. Solid right hook. 
English. What does she look like? Damn it! Don't move. What? Watch where you're going. You're lucky this is a company car. Hey. Put you back there, doesn't it? If somebody buys it, you realize it could happen any time, any day. How did it happen? Professional hit. Him and our only witness. Must have been watching us at the scene. I knew something was fishy about that anonymous tip. Who does that? A concerned citizen? Concerned citizens call the cops. This guy called us directly. It's not like we're in the phone book. Somebody targeted them. And I'm gonna find that bastard. Whatever happened last night, don't any of you forget, Krasinski would still be with us today if it wasn't for Howard Stark. Whether he pulled the trigger or not, we're only neck deep in this mess because of him. I want action plans on my desk in one hour. Stay vigilant. I'm not losing any more of you. Now I gotta go call Kudmiski's wife. I'll call his girlfriend. right there on the job yes it was sudden i know how you feel blindsided like when my cousin ralphie got hit by a bus granted he did just knock off a newsstand but still big shock uh, I, I don't know why it's hit me so hard we weren't close he was a, a brute a cheat he was disrespectful rude but he was good at his job I'm really sorry, honey. 
What can I do? Miss, could I get a refill? Um, do you still have that schnapps? Miss. Let me get this jerk his refill and I'll clock out. <sighs> I think that jerk quite fancies you. Shut up, English. You talk too much. 